There is another instance again. A lady, a woman that was also injured in her urinary tract, that is in her bladder, she was catheterized and she was unable to pass urine. She also dreamt of one Aima who also healed her condition. So we thank God. There are a lot of uh, spiritual experiences, countless, but these are the two that I can testify to. So I cannot uh, conclude without mentioning some of my experience with uh, uh, Sayyid Hafiz Allah Alayhi and the Malama as a personal physician. Um, even though I have a limitation to what I will say because um, it's a confidentiality, but I think like sharing some of the things that will make us increase our sabbati. Some of them is a uh, uh, Number one, natural healing. I observe that there is what we call natural healing that occurred in Sayyid. Example, when he was traumatized, when he was severely injured during the massacre, he bled excessively to the extent of reaching a point of hypoglyce, uh, hypobolemia. I've already explained what hypobolemia is. Hypobolemia, in, in a layman's language, let me say painting. Hypovolemia means there is minimal blood in the body, leading to low uh, delivery of blood to the essential organs of the body. And this could lead to hypoperfusion, leading to organ damage and subsequently death. But without interventions, the uh, uh, Sayyid went out of it and survived that. Another example is uh, he sustains multiple fractures, multiple pellets in his body, fragments in the body. But all, most of these fractures heal spontaneously. You could see the pellets in the, in the x-rays and some of the imaging, but you won't see the wounds. There is no evidence that the fracture had occurred in some part of uh, Sayyid's body. And there was an instance in which the eye he had an initial surgery after the event. He had an initial surgery. So the person that even operated, when he came back, he was expecting raw area. And then he, the way he saw the place healed as if a membrane was placed. In fact, he said, Jesus, Jesus Christ. So, you know, these are uh, important things that I need to share with you. And another thing is there is total absence of this psychological trauma. Despite all these uh, risk, risk factors that I mentioned, yeah? You know, Sayyid has faced all these risk factors. He has witnessed several killings, killings of his uh, children, his uh, people, everything he has noticed. In fact, he has been injured, he has been scattered with bullets, and yet there is a, we have never seen a single sign and symptoms of psychological trauma in him. That's what... I can testify to all this post-traumatic uh, distress syndrome, anxiety disorder, all this, never in him. And then there is what we call endurance of pain. I have never seen or hear Malan screaming of pain. Despite the fact that he had multiple uh, uh, pellets in his body, and this pellet can impinge of nerves, and you know nerves can, can transmit pain, nerve fibers. He has never screamed of pain. There was a time in the, in the prison when he had a condition called ingrown toenails. I'm sure some personal, some medical personal, uh, personnel may know what I mean by ingrown toenails. And they know the implication of what happened when somebody has that and the, the surgery, how painful it's the surgery. This is because of great uh, uh, sensations of the nails. You know nails. Even when you are having weight low, how do you experience pain? So the nails, both the two nails were removed. We are removed. That is part of the treatment. Both the nails, the big of the big toe, the right and the left, we are all removed without malam screaming, only minimal anesthesia. So if it is another person, he will scream. So and lastly, the contentment in him, he has a lot of morbidity and a lot of conditions. Today, one thing will be diagnosed, another day, another thing differently, next day is another thing. 
you will never hear Malon complaining. He always say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, he has never screamed. The same thing with uh, Malama, the kind of pain she has been experiencing with the bullet that has been impacted in her body is very intense and severe to the extent that if it is someone like me or you, I think the person would lose hope totally. Because when she's in that pain, you really, as, a, as an empathizer, you will really empathize with her because it's very unbearable. And this fact that they are always contented, they are always in their act of ibadah, they don't allow anything to disrupt their ibadah. So alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, may Allah speed their recovery and grant Sayyid Amalama sound health. Thank you.